Lauren Hope Glory again, bringing the hope and the glory back into your lives and welcome to the awakening. So what kind of day have you had today? I haven't done much today. I've taken care of myself. I've been resting a lot, breathing, crying, letting the tears stream out of me, learning more and more of what I need to learn in order to come on here and be able to do another awakening, another awakening show for you guys. Now, I'm not going to edit out any of this. I'm just going to let it stream. I'm just going to see what comes through, okay? <laughs> so welcome to the awakening, guys. Now, remember yesterday I said that in order to come into the light fully, that we really want to really experience the light really be in a beautiful new world, the world where all of you can realize your dreams, where all of you can do whatever you want. Wouldn't that be exciting? In order to do that, we have to open up our heart chakra. And the moment the heart chakra opens up, we're not going to see from these anymore. We're going to see from here, from your heart. And when you start to see from the heart, that's when the truth will start to happen. That's when your world will start to open up. That's when you'll start to see everything that you were told not to look at or, or you weren't even told about it. And of course, the media doesn't want you to open your heart. The media wants you to stay up here. In, 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 in this body, in the physical, in the 3D. Now, if you're new to all this stuff, let me just explain a little bit about that. When we're living on this planet with all our issues and all our worries, and all we can see is people walking around with masks, and all we can hear is what the media tells us, and all we can see is panic and fear and worry, and oh my God, oh my God, this is going to happen and that is going to happen. And I'm not going to be able to do this. And like, you know, because we have a human side to us and that human is very, very stuck in the physical. Uh, we all get caught up in it. I go around because I'm making programs now thinking, oh my God, is my hair okay? Uh, should I wear some lipstick? What about the wrinkles? <laughs> you know, we all go through it. And that is because we have been conditioned to live in 3D. We have not been told how unique we are, how amazing we are, and how we can heal everything, everything in the body and everything in our world. Because they didn't want us to know. Now, another word for 3D, you could call the matrix. Now, I'm sure you've all watched that film. And you know, when it comes to the point where they say to Neo, um, you can either take the blue pill and stay in the matrix, or you can take a red pill and you're free because then you start to see from the heart. The minute you're out of the matrix, you're able to detach with love. You're able to watch things from outside. You're able to come into the amazing uniqueness that you are, the light being that you are, that you were put here to be. Now, you should all be very proud of yourselves, guys, because every single person, every single human, every single starseed is here to do something, to be able to live in this 3D consciousness that we have done now for so long. We've lived in this consciousness for so long now. And look where it got us. Look at the misery. Look at the lack of fun. Look at the lack of joy. People working 24 hours a day trying to earn just enough to pay their mortgage, like some of my friends um look at the poverty look at the rent situation look how much houses cost look at what we created in this 3d consciousness in this matrix but the reason i say you should be proud of yourself 
is because all of this is built up and up and up and up. And now it's all blown up in our faces. And we did that because deep down inside us, we're love. And because we're love, we want to bring that forward. We want to bring the light forward. So cut. That's better. <laughs> now I can look at you. Sorry about that. I was looking. I need a new webcam, guys. So if you feel directed to get me a webcam, I'm very grateful. This one is very dark, as you can see. It's not my favorite. So as I said, we are bringing up all the dark and you need to be really proud of yourself because you were put on the planet, whether you're human, whether you're starseed, whether you're healer, wherever you are, you were put here for a reason to be part of this amazing new awakening, to break free from this matrix. And in so many words, come into the light, take the red pill, say, I've had enough. I do not consent to the way my world is being run. I want to live in a beautiful house. Um, I want to have a great life. I want to be healthy. I don't want to be numbed down with medication and crap. I don't want side effects. I don't want fibromyalgia. I'm just saying, as the collective, we've just taken it. Well, a lot of us haven't. But now we've got no choice. We've got no choice. And so now is the time to really, really understand that now you have a choice. Now you have a choice. Everything is collapsing. All the symptoms we would Sorry, not symptoms, <laughs> systems. I told you, I'm not going to edit this. Oh, and, and my neck and shoulders are playing up a bit because when I sit by the computer, please send me some light and love. <laughs> um, all the systems are breaking down around us. The entertainment that we had, the media, um, medicine, everything is breaking down, breaking down breaking down everything we created everything we saw from the eyes is going all the illusions i mean people talk about the mayan calendar maya means illusion all the illusions are breaking down around us it's a bit like the wizard of oz when you go and you take that curtain away there's only this little man that's it and if you think of the Wizard of Oz, it is so um, synchronistic to the way things are happening. Because you've got the Tin Man who has the heart, okay, the heart chakra. You've got the Scarecrow who's using the brain and the wisdom that we've got. And you've got the Lion who has the courage. And together, the heart, the courage that we are, the human race, because we are courageous beings. We need to give ourselves that respect and dignity to know how amazingly courageous we are. Look at what we've put up with. We've, we've dealt with grief, we've dealt with sickness, with loved ones dying, with poverty, with wars, with watching, all of these catastrophes. But that has made us stronger. I know it's made me so strong going through all the pain and the grief and the abandonment and the death and the wars and the abuse. It, it has molded me. <laughs> it has carved me into something so strong. So now we go looking for Oz. We go looking for the world that we want. You know how in The Wizard of Oz, everything goes from black and white to color. So we go looking for that beauty. We go looking for that beautiful, beautiful world with all the colors. And of course, Dorothy follows the yellow brick road. And that's us following, following our intuition, following the path. And there she meets the scarecrow, which is the brain. As I said, the wisdom. She, she meets the Tin Man which is the heart, and the heart is opening up everywhere. 
and, and she meets the lie and he says, put up your dukes. And he's ready, full of courage. He doesn't know he's got it. None of them know they have it. So now you're starting to realize that it's always been there. The wisdom, the courage, the, 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 uh, the brain, the consciousness, the common sense, it's always been there the same way as the Tin Man and the, and, and, and the Scarecrow and the Lion <laughs> put up your juice. <laughs> they always have had it. It's always been lying dormant inside us, but we've been using it, but we never realized. We never realized we had this. And now I'm telling you that the awakening is here for you to understand that nothing can conquer us. Nothing can take away our human spirit, which is full of heart, common sense and courage. The same, oh my God, it's just like the Wizard of Oz. And the minute you go to Oz and there's this big booming voice like we call the cabal. Oh, we're going to take you over. We're going to hurt you. We're going to do this to you and that to you. Bill Gates and all that lot. You pull the curtain away and there's this tiny little man sitting there. Remember the Wizard of Oz? Sitting there pretending, acting, and that's all it is, an illusion. It's a complete illusion. Everything's an illusion except love, courage, common sense, and heart. <laughs> and that's the awakening. When I was a little girl, my mum used to say that whenever anyone would turn up at the house, I would run to them and I would hug them. And then we went to live in Israel and that little girl was pushed down with all sorts of things that a child should never have to go through, with fear and wars and abuse. And mum used to say to me, what happened to that little girl that used to hug everyone? What happened to you? You were born to love. You were born to give hugs. And now they've taken that away for a while. Now, I don't agree with it, which is okay. Is that I started to wake up because of all of this. And once I left Israel and I came back to England, I was able to get away from the darkness, the darkness of wars, the darkness of terrorism, which I question, as you know, I question everything now. But all I know is that that is not a way for a child to grow up. And that's what's coming up now, showing us what the hell is happening to children. Now we cannot ever, ever be complacent again about what's going on with children. We can never be complacent again about how cruel that side is, that part of the world is, whatever is doing this. And my prayer for all of us is that when this is over and we come out of lockdown, this will end. Love will be everywhere and this will have ended. Cruelty, wars, poverty will come to an end. So that's really what I'm trying to say here. Now, if you're a human being that is just starting to wake up, this program is for you, as well as others that have realized this stuff years ago. Take everything gently. Make sure you nurture yourself. Make sure you eat properly and you rest and you take time. Give yourself a chance to laugh and watch a lot of comedy as well. Find a balance because the darkness, well, there's a lot of it, guys. And we can't deny it because, as I said, in order to wake up, you have to experience the dark. 
I want to give you a few examples from when I was in the therapeutic community, because I went in there completely broken. I was completely broken. I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And I was put into this place where loads of people came in with similar conditions. And we only knew what we knew. And it was a very difficult journey for me. I suffered a lot in that place with a lot of tough love. But I'm very, very grateful because when I came out, I came out pure, full of light. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because when I went in there for the first year, all I experienced was darkness. It was all coming up inside me. Everything that I'd been through, I sat and I cried. I sat and cried for about six months. I sat on the floor for about six months and cried and cried and cried. I was allowed to do that as long as I carried on uh, with my chores, <laughs> running the community, and I didn't break the rules too much. They let me have that leeway of my first six months. And I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried and I rang the bell and I asked for validation. We had a validation bell because the darkness was coming up all over the place. The fear, the panic, the post-traumatic stuff. Someone shut a door too loudly once and I panicked like mad because, as I say, I grew up in wars. But through sitting through that darkness and watching it everywhere in the community, everyone, when my mirrors, everywhere, someone threatened me one day because I said to her, you've got beautiful makeup on. And I didn't like wearing makeup. I don't wear a lot of makeup. I never have done, particularly only if it's not organic, I won't wear it. But in those days, I wore even less. And they didn't like me. Some people didn't understand why I wouldn't wear makeup. Anyway, this woman had makeup on one day. And I actually said to her, I made a terrible mistake. And I said to her, like that little girl, innocent little girl that wanted to hug, I said to her, you look beautiful today. And she threatened me and said, I will t I'm going to tear your head off. Because I said, you look beautiful today. And that was the darkness. But I realized that my rage, her rage was my rage. I had that rage in me. And I took that out on people. So she was the teacher. So the darkness, everything that's coming up now, it's a teacher. It's a teacher to show us a way into the light. But because when I gave myself a chance to feel all that darkness, guess what happened? I ended up in the light. I remember once I had an experience in the community where I was starting to feel very, very um, like a Jew, if you know what I mean. Like I say to a lot of people, we're living in 1937 now. If you understand what that means, you need to get your act together and you need to wake up because we cannot go into the darkness the same way that the, the Jews did in the Holocaust, okay? But one day I was sitting in the therapeutic community and there was some kind of noise going on and we were sitting there having our dinner, our lunch. And I thought to myself, I'm in a concentration camp. I felt completely isolated to everyone. I'm not talking about past lives. I felt different. I felt different. I felt someone that they picked on all the time. I felt isolated. I felt different. I felt like a Jew in Nazi Germany. It just suddenly felt different. And I felt like that I was caged in. Anyway, I rang the bell. And I called everyone together because that's what we would do in the therapeutic community. And I said, I feel like a Jew in a concentration camp. Leave me alone. Stop it. Stop bullying me. Stop the tough love. I, I don't get any support. Yada, yada. It all came up. It all came up. 
And they got a little bit nervous about that stuff because, of course, they thought that I could, you know, I could create problems, anti-Semitism. And they said to everyone, this is what they said, Lauren comes from a different culture. <laughs> she may run around without shoes because that's what they did in Israel and stuff like that. And Lauren comes from a different culture. And so you need to respect that because they got a little bit scared. They stood up for me. They very rarely stood up for me. They wanted you to learn how to fight your own battles. And that, that was very interesting. And that, that was one of the experiences I went through in the therapeutic community. I went through the darkness. And then I had a massive, 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 massive dark night of the soul. And I'm telling you this because look at me now. Look at me. I came out of the therapeutic community after I managed to tap into what it felt like to be a 10-year-old child who was being abused continuously by the family dentist. When my parents kept sending me back, molested, seriously molested. And that was me going through a huge dark night of the soul in the therapeutic community, feeling what a little 10 year old child would feel a little bit of what I felt the abuse. And I was able to experience it again because I was in the right place and there was no medication. The darkness, I was feeling the darkness everywhere. And then the magic happened and I woke up. One day they tried to discharge me. It's in the book, Simply Amazing, chapter eight. You can read my life story. You can purchase the book. I can let you know where you can get it. And once the lockdown is finished, it'll be a lot easier, obviously, but you can get it from me, obviously. But anyway, what I'm saying is, one day they tried to discharge me about four times because they said I wasn't moving on and I wasn't getting well. And I was working on myself all the time. I didn't understand why they didn't like me. I had no friends in there except one person who stood up for me and said, why are you carrying on like this? Why are you bullying on so much? Why are you being like this towards her? And she was like my guardian angel. I'll never forget that. But one day, they all sat down together, like they did, and the fourth time was, that's it, Lauren, your time's up, we're getting rid of you. And they got, and I was like, but why? I haven't done anything. Why, why do you want to get rid of me? I'm doing my best. Anyway, they went around the room, and luckily, they didn't get rid of me. But I sat there in total shock thinking, why does everybody hate me? I remember driving home that day, thinking, why do they hate me so much? What have I done? What did I ever do to them that they hate me? And when I got home, I went to bed that night, and I had a night terror, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I grabbed hold of my husband, and I said, don't let me go back. And that was the, the light bulb that needed to go off. And it was that I had asked my parents to not send me back to the dentist because I knew what he was doing. And so that was it. I suddenly realized it's nothing to do with me. It's not my fault. It's them, their stupidity. And the, it went. And I got in a piece, 100% in a piece. It was like magic. I, I don't know, I have it on and off, but this was like pure inner peace. I mean, this was like mind-blowing inner peace that everything felt just okay. And I went back to the community the next day. I told them that you were going to see a new Lauren, and they didn't believe me. And those that bullied me left because the, the work was done. <laughs> they couldn't do anything anymore. The work was done, I was free. They were free to go. The most extreme ones, 
that tried to fix me and couldn't, <laughs> or they felt they had no work to do, there's no bullying to do, because there's Lauren sitting there saying, okay, what am I doing? Why am I pursuing you? Oh, because I make rice differently to you? I'm not joking. I made the rice differently to them. In Israel, you make them in a certain way. In England, you make them a certain way. But they used to bully me about everything. We go shopping, you name it. And, and then I was saying to them, but why? What am I doing wrong? And they thought I was messing with them, but I wasn't. I was in pure peace. I was just, explain it to me. What am I doing wrong? Why does this hurt you so much? You've only known me for 16 months or whatever, 14 months. How could I be the one you hate? Surely I'm representing someone? Who am I representing? And I, I would just ask them these questions. And then it all started to turn around. People used to sit beside me and say, oh my God, I can feel the peace around you. This is beautiful. <laughs> and I had a wonderful time. That was the best time in the therapeutic community because people started to like me. They started to respect me. I became an elder. And it was like whatever Lauren said now, it was like God saying it. <laughs> it was so exciting. So I went through this intense darkness to come into the light. And now I was in the light. And when I left, they all stood up and they gave me a standing ovation because they saw this transformation from this baby sitting on the floor crying every single day <laughs> to this beautiful, enlightened elder. Because I was an elder, because I'd come to the point where new people were coming in. And it's like, Lauren is like one of our elders and we're so proud of her. <laughs> I am a success story. I came through this intense darkness. And just before I finish, because I want to make more programs and show you how the dark leads to the light, um, is when my father died, my family cut me off and I ended up in a wheelchair. And I was devastated. Absolutely devastated. And there were some storylines in there, which I'll go into another time. I was my father's empath and I helped him move on. The person I love more than anything, I helped him move on. But one thing that came through from the wheelchair and the darkness was I started to get red pilled <laughs> because I started to watch the truth channels and I started to wake up more and more. And then um, Casey Armstrong, when I came out of the wheelchair, he said, Lauren, you didn't have a pity party. <laughs> so I want you in my book. So this is all how the darkness leads to the light. So now the whole world is going through a dark night of the soul. And this is how I see it. But from my experience, when you really, really give yourself an opportunity to feel that dark night of the soul. There's so many things I've discovered in the wheelchair, which I'll tell you about another time. <laughs> Healing, I healed everything in my body. I even healed my own leg without an operation. Um, I learned how to edit and make programs and moving on TV. So many, so many things. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, we are in a wheelchair now, you're in a metaphorical wheelchair, you can't go very far, you can't do very much, you've been stuck, you're stuck, and now you're stuck. I recommend the best thing to do is close your eyes and ask yourself, how am I feeling? And if you feel like shit, Ask yourself, what do I need to release in order to make my world better? Simple. That's it. Sit with it, is what they used to say to me in the community. Lauren, please sit with it. Please just sit with it. <laughs> Can you not ring the bell anymore? <laughs> they took the bell away from me. 
I was put on contracts not to ring the bell, not to call everyone together. I don't need to ring a bell anymore. When I suffer now, I go into meditation or I contact, I make contact with my mentors. I, I pray and I ask for healing from my mentors and it comes. I have a good cry, I call the Samaritans. I do a program for you. I give love, I become that child that I was, that five-year-old. I love you, <laughs> here's a hug. And one day, I cannot wait for that day when we meet. And it will be soon, it will be soon. But from my heart to yours, this is a chance to feel the darkness, to feel the pain, the negativity, the suffering, and let that heart open, like those men that are crying. Open your heart. Because guys, if we don't open our heart, we're nothing. We're nothing. If we don't feel real feelings of love, and how amazing it is to be a human being with a heart, then we're nothing. So this is your chance for salvation. I'm not religious, but Course in Miracles talks about salvation. I'm just gonna check before we go, I'm going to check what Course in Miracles talks about today. Course in Miracles says, that was yesterday. <laughs> I haven't changed it. I'm not, we're on a review. Today is love being, God being love is also happiness. And I seek for what belongs to me in truth. Love is happiness. God to me is love. And so it's happiness. It can only be happiness. And I have a right to have the happiness. So beyond that darkness, I want you to celebrate life. I want you to hug your children if you're with them. Hug the one you're with. <laughs> it's like the song. If you can't be with the one you love, hug the one you're with. And that could just be you. Hug yourself. Hug your pets. Do gratitude. You have food? Please, God, if not, then contact me. Because everyone should have food. You have shelter over your head. What is your dream? And before, how to say, say in a crazy world, these are the cards I channeled when I went into the therapeutic community. And, and I'd say this webcam is dreadful. So if anybody feels like donating a good webcam to me, I'd be very grateful if you've got a spare one or if you could donate some money, I'll buy one. Thank you, because this is my job now and I love it. Or you can buy cards. You can purchase the cards from me, the 12 pounds. I'd stay sane in a crazy world. Or the book, Simply Amazing, with loads of stories in it, including mine. I'm chapter eight. Right, let's choose a card for you. We are all connected. Wow, we are all connected. You got to get yourself connected. Woo! Right, don't mind. Today, I would like you to grow in your understanding that we are all connected, part of this universe and here to help each other find more peace. When I understand this concept, I feel much better and I stay well. I don't blame, I don't punish. I accept that the driver in front of me, who is so slow, is teaching me patience. How can you learn this? By watching and understanding what your fellow man is teaching you. If you're not ready, then choose another card. Today I learn that I am connected to everyone in some way. So that is card number 28. We are all connected, okay? How to stay sane in the crazy world cards. We are all connected. So that's it, guys. I'm going to love you and leave you. Now please subscribe down below, click the bell so you'll get the programs as they keep coming on. These are gonna be positive programs all the time. Me sending out all the love that I have in my heart and all the hugs. And as I say, if you can't be with the one you love, 
love the one you're with. <laughs> it is you. Love the one you're with. You. Love, your, love the one you're with. So subscribe, please, down below. Uh, you can contact me at lauren at movingontv.uk. You can phone me on 07437 532 um, You can contact me on Facebook, Moving On TV. You can contact me on Instagram, Hope Glory Productions, because Moving On TV got wiped, so I'm not going to say why at the moment. And uh, yeah. Just join in, join in the fun. And as I say, if you're directed to donate me a better webcam, that would be so cool. Because at the moment, that's all the work I can do uh, online. And uh, if you're directed to give me to give some money to to donate, <laughs> sorry, if you're directed to donate any money. Um, for me to buy a new webcam <laughs> or to get another editor to help me do some of this stuff so I can churn it out a bit quicker and build it up a bit quicker. If you want to come onto the program, not this one because this is me, but into any of our other programs, you're welcome. If you want to do your own program, whatever it is you do, let me know. We can chat about it and we can agree on, on, on the way where you can do that. Lots of fun, guys. Love you lots. Take care now. And if you are actually um, a company that does um, holistic um, makeup, as you see, I wear hardly any, holistic makeup for women or products, and there's no chemicals, no SLS, no parabens, nothing like that, to help us stay in love, in the light, by being healthy, then please get in touch with me because as Piaf said as well, I never wear the makeup, only the organic makeup because it makes me feel nude. <laughs> Bless her. Love you lots. Take care. Bye.